Merging south. Head. Hunt. It's... Drop it, Sonatin. Drop it.
Once again, good afternoon and welcome. Today, the United States Army Military District of Washington, represented by the soldiers of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone, pay a special tribute to General Paul E. Funk II, 17th Commanding General, United States Army Training and Doctrine Command, who is retiring after 38 years of distinguished service to the United States Army and our nation. Participating in today's review, from left to right, is the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone. Formed in 1922 by then Army Chief of Staff General John J. Pershing, the United States Army Band is the premier band of our senior service. Pershing Zone provides musical support for ceremonies and special events in our nation's capital and throughout the United States. The United States Army Band is under the direction of Major Aaron Morris and led by Drum Major Rob Moore. Elements of the Old Guard include Bravo Company, commanded by Captain Tony DeGalati and led by Sergeant First Class Bruce Henderson. Next on line is Charlie Company, commanded by Captain Alan Reynolds and led by Sergeant First Class Christopher Arenas. Next on line is Honor Guard Company, commanded by Captain Andrew Borbach and led by First Sergeant Adam Pugh. Following is the Commander in Chief's Guard, patterned after the unit created by General George Washington in 1776 to be his personal guard. The Commander in Chief's Guard is commanded by Captain Zachary Ricketts and led by Sergeant First Class Joshua Jenkins. The last element online, dressed in the Continental Musician's uniform, is the Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. During the American Revolution, musicians wore the reverse colors of their parent infantry unit. The men and women of the Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps maintained this tradition by wearing red coats instead of the infantry blue. The Corps is led today by Drum Major John Parks. Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the commander of troops for today's ceremony, Colonel David B. Rowland, Commander, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. Since the days of the American Revolution, the colors have been one of the most important elements of a military unit. Therefore, taking the center of our formation in just a moment, and bearing the national color is the nation's foremost color team, the 3rd Infantry's Continental Color Guard, led by Sergeant Nicholas Ferris. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors.
Thomas. Staff, order. Please be seated. The history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment reflects the growth and development of our nation. 55 well-earned battle streamers, 2 valorous unit awards, 3 meritorious unit commendations, and 5 superior unit awards attest to the Old Guard's record of bravery in action and achievements during peacetime. In 1922, the War granted permission guard to pass in review with bayonets fixed. The old guard will now fix bayonets to the traditional beat of the drum. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand is the reviewing official for today's ceremony, General Paul E. Funk II, accompanied by the host, General James C. McConville, 40th Chief of Staff of the Army. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as honors are rendered and remain standing for the invocation offered by Chaplain Colonel Gregory Edison. Present. 
present arms. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Colonel Gregory Edison. Will you join me for a word of prayer? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence today as we celebrate the distinguished military career of General Paul Funk and his decade of impact of service to our Army and to our nation. He has served at every echelon with integrity, distinction, fervor, and honor. We are grateful for his expertise, patriotism, his visionary leadership, and for his numerous sacrifices, which have made enduring strategic advancements for our army and nation. We recognize and give thanks for the many sacrifices and the undying faithful support of his wife, Dr. Beth. As General Paul and Dr. Beth Funk transition to the next chapter of their lives, may you, O oh Lord, continue to bless and prosper them in the days to come. Victory starts here for God and country. Amen.
be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the playing of the United States National Anthem.
please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, General McConville and Miss McConville are now making their way to the floor to honor today's retiree. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, July 9th, 1918 has awarded the Distinguished Service Medal to General Paul E. Funk II, United States Army, for exceptionally meritorious service to the government in duties of great responsibility over a 38-year career, culminating as the commander for the United States Army Training and Doctrine Command. He has provided guidance and support for thousands of soldiers, civilians, and their families all over the world. His inspiration and outstanding dedication enhance readiness during peacetime and mission accomplishment during combat operations. General Funk's superb dedication, leadership, and commitment contributed to the Army community and reflect great credit upon him, the United States Army Training and Doctrine Command, and the United States Army. Headquarters, Department of the Army, Special Orders. By order of the Secretary of the Army, the following General Officer is retired. General Paul E. Funk II. <laughs> General McConville is now presenting the United States flag to General Funk for his faithful service to his country. This time, the Distinguished Public Service Medal is being presented to Beth Y. Funk for exceptional contributions to the United States Army Training and Doctrine Command from June 2019 through September 2022. Dr. Funk's personal involvement and commitment to the Army family and the welfare of soldiers greatly enhanced the quality of the programs offered to soldiers, civilians, and their families around the world. As a compassionate and pioneering coach and mentor, she fostered positive relationships in every community she served. Dr. Funk's distinctive accomplishments across more than 35 years of devoted service to the Army are a great credit to her, the United States Army Training and Doctrine Command, the United States Army, and the nation. On the occasion of retirement of this distinguished soldier, we also recognize the outstanding service of Dr. Beth Funk, who is presented with the Department of the Army Certificate of Appreciation for her faithful and devoted service. It is her dedicated support which made possible such a lasting contribution to our nation. Signed, General James E. McConville, 40th Chief of Staff of the Army. At this time, on behalf of General Funk, 
a bouquet of flowers is being presented to Dr. Beth Funk in appreciation for her dedication and support. Flowers are also being presented to Miss Danny Funk and Miss Betty Yesak. <laughs> Teddy bears with army shirts will be presented to Mr. Jack Brown and Miss Ro Roxy Funk. Army Knives will be presented to Lieutenant General Retired Butch Funk, Mr. Matt Funk, Miss Christine Funk, Miss Amanda Brown, Mr. Jake Brown, and Mr. Nate Funk. <laughs> Proud of General Funk and Dr. Funk's devotion to our country and we wish them happiness and prosperity in their well-earned retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Post the colors. Staff, white, face. Please be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, General McConville. Well, well, good afternoon, and, and thanks for coming out today. You know, yesterday we had a great change of command ceremony at, at TRADOC. And as many of you know, the motto at TRADOC is victory starts here, and rightly so, because winning does matter uh, in our Army. And today at Comedy Hall, the motto is retirement starts here. And it does, you know, because every day is a great day to be in the United States Army. When I see Paul's picture up there, that's his official photo. Every day he came to work, he had that big smile on. Sergeant Major, not so, but, but the, the, the commander did. And, and, and this is a special day, a very special day, because we get to honor a tremendous Army family, Paul and Beth Funk, and celebrate 38 years, 38 years of dedicated service to the nation. As I look around the room, and I'm going to uh, highlight a couple of our VIPs, uh, but it just shows, Paul, how much we all think of you, how much the community thinks of you. Uh, thanks to the Secretary for, for being here. Secretary Wormuth is here. The Undersecretary is here. Appreciate that. Vice is here, and, and, and Mrs. George Sard Major, and Mrs. Sard Major, Alexandra here. General Sasaki and, and Patty, thank you all for being here. General Cody, for, for, former vice, we have vices lined up. JC and Ann, thank you for being here. I think I saw Mark. I'm looking around. I, I, I see Bobby Brown. I see Mike Garrett and Laura Lai. I got your name. I finally didn't slaughter your name, I, you know, and, and I got that right. And uh, I see the DAS, the Sergeant Major of the Army, so many retired friends being here. It is really, really special. And, you know, one of the things that I like about doing these ceremonies, you know, you think you know people, but when you get to do these ceremonies, you get to kind of do some studying. And you get some really good insights on people. And, you know, when I think about Paul and Beth, it's a true Army story. And, Paul, I may be stealing your thunder, but, you know, I went ahead and referenced Funk's fundamental, fundamental number 35, which says, take other people's stuff. Especially it's good, so I'm taking a lot of that stuff today because it's really your story is, is so good. Paul and Beth grew up both in Army families. They both had decorated um, combat leaders as fathers. Um, Paul's father is here, and uh, uh, many of you know him, Lieutenant General Butch Funk. He's here today with his wife and Paul's mother, Danny. And as we, many of us know, General Funk commanded one of the Army's Air Cavalry Squadrons. And I've got a special place in my heart for Air Cavalry Squadrons, having commanded one in Vietnam. And he went on to command the 3rd Armored Division and its famous le left hook during Desert Storm. Storm. And he retired uh, after commanding three corps, which is really a pretty good story, because I think we all know that, you know, that's what Paul had a chance to do. And they are... Uh, at Fort Hood and where they live. Welcome to both of you. How about a hand for the Funks being here, okay? I'd also like to welcome Beth's mother, Betta. And Betta's husband and, and Beth's father is, is retired, as many of you know, Lieutenant General John Yosak, an outstanding combat leader who commanded Army Central Command in Saudi Arabia during Desert Storm. And he is buried over at Arlington, and I know he's looking at this event with, with just tremendous pride in what you all have done. And so here's the story. Paul and Beth's fathers worked together at Fort Hood, and that's where they met as teenagers. Beth was a freshman, cheerleader at Fort Hood High School, and Paul was a senior on the football team. In fact, his, his jersey, and I think it's number 30th, I don't know if that's in the, you know, the, the, the Funk's fundamentals, is just retired last November. So how about that? I'm told, and you can uh, confirm this, but they were vote, both voted class favorites, which wouldn't surprise anyone that knows them. Beth is smiling. Is that true? Okay, I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> but here's an interesting one, too, is uh, Beth swore that she would never marry an Army guy. She has spent her whole childhood moving uh, from one place to another and had no plans to continue that life. How'd that work out? Anyways. <laughs> That all changed when she got to know Paul. Paul had already decided that he wanted to join the Army when he was 10 years old, 
and he saw his dad flying a Cobra. How could, Air Cavalry guys, how could you not want to join the Army? And they got married later when Paul returned to Fort Hood as an armored platoon leader in the 1st Cavalry Division. And not too many lieutenants get to say their division commander attended their wedding. In fact, in Paul's case, his division commander was the father of the bride. Pretty cool. And so, Beth, you know, we're really glad. I'm certainly glad. The Army's glad that you changed your, 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 your plans about marrying an Army officer because thousands of families have really benefited from your leadership and from your dedicated self and service. And I, I want to say a little more about Beth because it's really, you know, we all know, all, this, all of us who get to this level know why we're here. And it's usually because we have great spouses like Beth. But, you know, she's cared. You know, when you think about deployments, and, and Paul had six deployments. And, and the toughest job, quite frankly, is being back, taking care of our families, and, and, and working through all those stuff. But that's not all she did. She was also served as a vice principal of Fort Hood Elementary School. She earned a master's degree. She, you know, we talk a little about the kids in a, in a, in a second. She's doing all this while raising these great kids. She's a recipi recipient about every civilian award there, award there is. She has a doctorate in educational leadership. She's a small business owner and an accomplished yoga instructor. So, Beth, I want to thank you on my behalf, the Army's half. How about a hand for Beth Conk, okay? Thank you. And, and Paul and Beth's three children, they're not children, but they're adults now. In fact, I knew when they were little kids. I'm looking over there in, in the thing and go, wow, they have all grown up. And Matt's here with his wife, Christine, and 18-month-old eight, Roxy. All right. Well done. Um, daughter, Man is here with, with husband, Jake, and their son, Jack, is there. Jack, how about that? Okay. And son, Nate, is he, here with his girlfriend, Abigail. How serious are we? Pretty serious. You want to announce anything? We got the, I'll give you the mic. I'll ah, just say it. Okay. You got a chance. I'll, I'll go ahead and do it right now. No, okay. I don't want to, never miss an opportunity to embarrass your kids. That's what I, that's our motto. But anyways, a spe special welcome and, and, and to all the other members of the Funk family here today. I think Paul's brother James is here with his wife, sister Becky, with her husband, Dave Klontz, who served with us in the 1st Cavalry Division, is here. Their son, Carter, best brother, John. It is just really cool to have all you here. So thanks, thanks for coming out and joining us. And... and and, and Paul and, and really the family, we, we've crossed paths many times over the years. You know, we were in First Cavalry together uh, in Baghdad. Paul was the G3 and, and we, other commanders. I see Mike Formica out there. And we, all, we all served together in a uh, very, very, you know, uh, critical time. And then we got a chance to see each other again in, in a Afghanistan. And, and Paul was the DCG for First Infantry Division. And so I can speak from personal experience. When I say that Paul Funk is a proven combat leader, he's a tremendous Army officer, and quite frankly, he's just a fine human being that, you know, brings great positivity to wherever he's at. He's commanded the world's greatest soldiers, and we got to see them today out there. And quite frankly, we, you know, we, we want to give retirees a chance to, to say what they want to say, and that's why we kind of did the, the, the pass and review before we got to this, this phase. But he's commanded every single level, company, squadron, Brigade, Division Corps, and Army Command level, including, as I said, commanding the Great Three Corps at Fort Hood. Six combat deployments, and, but he always found a way to connect with his family. He was deployed to Desert Storm when, when Amanda was born, and his father and his father-in-law um, joined Paul downrange to watch the video of their granddaughter being born. Uh, that must be pretty exciting. Beth, how'd that go? No, never, you know. <laughs> Years later, Paul would stay up all hours of the night in Iraq to listen to Matt and, and, and Nate play varsity sports. And so, you know, it's interesting. Paul knows how to put people first. And whether it's his family or the soldiers and civilians he is leading, and I think it was fitting for him to his final command to be TRADOC, because TRADOC is our people's command. It's all about people. It's about getting uh, the most talented young men and women into the world's greatest team and then ensuring them, ensuring that they are highly trained, disciplined, and fit to protect our nation. Because at the end of the day, that's why our armies exist, to protect the nation by fighting and winning the nation's wars. And under Paul's leadership, 
You know, what's really pretty amazing when you think about it over the last three years, two years of that was under COVID. And Paul had to really demonstrate innovative leadership so we could still recruit, we could still train, when many armies just stopped doing their business. But we couldn't do that. And he also oversaw the evolution of really taking our multi-domain concept and really putting it in a doctrine. And quite frankly, we're going to release that very soon, but you're the one that kind of put that together. Um, for Bobby Brown, we're going to do that at AUSA. We're going to have something to roll out. But um, Paul put all that stuff together. And then the final thing that Paul put together was our future soldier prep course, which I think is transformational and it's going to change the way we bring young men and women uh, into the Army, ensuring that they can meet our standards. And when I think about, you know, our philosophy, um, it's w about people first. It's one that Paul and Beth Funk have embodied for almost four decades. It must be in their blood. So let me close with thanking you for 38 years of distinguished service to the nation. We've all been proud to serve with you. It's very, very special. We wish you all the best on your next rendezvous with destiny down at Fort Hood. Thank you very much. God bless you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, General Funk. There he is. I actually usually start out by saying my name is uh, Funk and I'm an American soldier, but tonight, today I want to start out and say I'm Mike Garrett's friend. Mike, good to see you, brother. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. To the distinguished guests, family, friends, and all the soldiers and civilians here today, my name is Funk, and for the last time in over 38 years of time in the uniform, I am an American soldier. And I, I, I do want to highlight that, uh, you know, when we were down at Mike's, uh, just the retirement uh, ceremony about a month, two months ago, he talked about love and gratitude. So for all of you here today, he was exactly right. I have a tremendous amount of gratitude for you to be here today, and we love you all. Thanks you very much. <laughs> Chief, I want to thank you for hosting this ceremony. I know how tremendously busy you are, and I really, really do appreciate it. And I'm call, proud to call you my war buddy, and I appreciate it very much. And Maria, thanks for being such a great friend to my Beth. I really appreciate your leadership, too. And Secretary, Madam Secretary, thanks for being here today. I really appreciate it. Under, great to see you, Under. Thank you. The Vice is here, too. And I'm looking around. I'm trying to see if my great friend Felix Gedney made it. I'm not sure he did. He is present for duty. Felix Gedney and I, uh, of, of Her Majesty's Cavalry, and Felix, we're sorry for the loss of the Queen, but uh, of Her Majesty's, the ca thanks for coming all the way from Oman to be here today. I was privileged to lead a 72-nation coalition with Felix, and I would march to any campaign with him by my side and with Polly, the artist, at the canvas. Felix, thanks for coming, brother. Thanks to my tremendous family and all of our extended family. You honor us by attending, and you have been witness to so many of these moments I'm going to highlight today. I know ceremonies like this are difficult to plan and execute, so before we go any further, let's give a big round of applause for everyone who worked so hard to make this world-class event happen. And to Colonel Dave Rowland, the commander of troops, and back when he was cool, he was Tiger Six at Fort Hood. How about a big round of applause? I, uh, I made my first trip as the trade arc commander to Fort Jackson, and I want to paint a scene for you. Uh, in, in 2019, it was about 5.30 in the morning, and Brigadier General Be uh, Beagle, Beagle, who will soon be in charge at CAC, uh, we ran up the hill. It was dark, and there was a mist developing. 
but you could hear this noise. It was the unmistakable sound of soldiers moving in uniform, unison towards us. And then it stopped. The lights turned on, and there were 1,200 soldiers out there on, their, on that field with their drill sergeants getting ready to do the soldier ceremony. And I was looking at them, hot, dirty, sweaty. They were standing taller, and they had just finished the forge, the toughest thing they'd ever done in their lives. And then the drill sergeants put patches on their shoulders that read U.S. Army and told them, now you're a soldier. That moment, full of emotion, that accompanies the transformation from the civilian to American soldier is what makes this profession different. On that field, fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, husbands, and wives, Americans from all walks of life, seemingly ordinary people, chose to do something less than one half of one percent of Americans choose to do. They are the very best of us. They chose to answer the call and raise their right hand. They chose to say, send me, and we're honored today to be in the presence of men and women who made that same decision. So I'd like to take a moment to recognize our veterans, and, our, uh, and especially our Vietnam veterans. To you, I would like to say, welcome home. Would all the veterans here today please stand and be recognized. So it's been my life's honor to serve, sweat, and sacrifice alongside soldiers just like them, just like you for nearly four decades in peace and in war. As I tell a few stories about some windows in time, if you were, there, you were with us, smile and nod your head. I will always remember the times that when we shared the suck. It's not the quantity of time, but rather the quality of time we've shared. Ours is the most exclusive fraternity and sorority in the world, that of the combat soldier. As I reflect on my time in uniform, I'm struck by the power of moments, often seemingly simple moments and brief windows in that time that defined me, that are permanently etched in my memory, and that change the course of my life. When viewed individually, moments are just that, fragile and fleeting, but collectively, they're powerful and combined tell powerful stories of what being a soldier is all about. As the chief said, when I was 10 years old, I saw my dad, my hero, flying a Cobra helicopter and thought he was the baddest SOB on the planet, and I wanted to be just like him. So I joined the Army in 1984 as a flat-bellied freedom fighter with a fish and wildlife degree from Montana State University. Yes, fish all day and wildlife all night. And I chose to branch armor because, as Mike Garrett, my great friend, knows, that everything else is just a support branch to cavalry. <laughs> my time as a Montana State Bobcat and as a member of the Sigma Chi fraternity gained me lifelong friends, and they're here today. Brian, Walt, Tom, and Barry. Barry's not with us, but he's watching online. He got sick just before he got here, and they're here with us today. How about a big round of applause for those guys? And there have been many, many ceremonies. My du first duty station was Fort Hood, as the chief said, and I was married to my Fort Knox class favorite. For over 30, uh, 35 years, my sweetheart at the first team chapel. And yes, my division commander was also my father-in-law. I learned the fundamentals of soldiering as a tank platoon leader alongside two of my very best friends, Larry Smith and Roger Alford. As a company commander, we earned best tank company in the 3rd Armored Division, spearhead commanded by my own father. Our company won the honor during an operation called Roundup One, a tribute to our Montanan roots. After all, God's area code is 406, as my cousin Marcy will attest to. And I'm thrilled to be recognized, and I think they're here. Two of my platoon sergeants are here today, Ralph Ward and Jerry South. Are you here? Yeah, we're here. <laughs> but, un but unbeknownst to me, 
we were just a few months away from Desert Storm. I was only a few months from, away from deploying on my first of my six combat deployments, from leaving my eight-month pregnant wife and my one-year-old son, and a few months away from the privilege of deploying alongside my dad, who was still my division commander, and my father-in-law, Lieutenant General John Yosak, the commander of Third Army. I would meet our mentors and lifelong friends, the Dempseys, and those shared moments in time have now spanned generations. While we were deployed in support of Desert Storm, I learned firsthand that talking ain't fighting. As we took down the fourth largest army in the world in 100 hours, I learned the importance of stance and balance. I also learned that life of a soldier is tough on families. As we watched the birth of our, my daughter, half a world away in a tent with my dad and my father-in-law, I learned that family takes care of family as my mom and my mother-in-law secured the home front and were there for Beth when Amanda was born. Those formative lessons during the window, that window of time, along with countless others about training, maintaining, morale, discipline, and teamwork, shaped the rest of my career. Forward in time, I have treasured the memories of many shared moments in the amount of where I was privileged to serve with so many stellar leaders represented by Bob Cohn, Chuck Lombardo, and Brick Miller, to name just a few. I've had a, a lot of jobs in the Army, but none can compare to command. I always wanted to be a cavalry squadron commander, and the opportunity to command Gary Owen, 17 Cab, is still the highlight of my career. At the time, it was a divisional cavalry squadron in the 1st Cavalry Division, and in my opinion, the best task organized force the Army has ever had. Jason and Delilah Lyman, Jeremy Wilson, Patrick Michaelis, and Dave and Tammy Coslin represent those powerful moments, and I think they're all here. Seventh first. <laughs> but halfway through my time as Gary Owen Six, the world changed forever, and we became a nation at war. President George W. Bush told Americans in the immediate aftermath of 9-11, which is just a couple of days away, that we will not tire, we will not falter, and we will not fail. And fail we did not. Leaders like Abrams, McConville, and Formica assured that would, not be, that would be the case in America's first team. I deployed as Iron Horse 6, one word, all caps, from October 2006 to January 2008 as part of the surge in Iraq with tremendous people like the Boyles, the Browns, the Cooks, the Sanders, and loyal wages. We were truly in the arena, as Teddy Roosevelt would say. Our faces were marred by dust and sweat and blood. We lost many troopers during the 15 months. In the words of my great mentor, General Dempsey, I promised myself that I would make it matter for the rest of my life. Our nation owes a debt of gratitude to our Gold Star families that it can never repay. When I left Iraq in 2008, I never thought I'd be back. But I was wrong and probably should have bought some property there as a long-term investment. A year into commanding the Big Red One, I, along with my good friend and the finest soldier I've ever met, Tony Grinston, our Sol Sergeant Major of the Army, deployed several hundred troopers who were brave, responsible, and on point for the nation on a short notice to the sounds of the guns, this time back to Iraq to be the first division to, come to lead to the Combined Joint Task Force's land component commander in Operation Resolve to fight ISIS. I remember the moment we stepped off the plane in Baghdad with the first units to return after the U.S. forces left in 2011. We were met by James Terry, who commanded the 3rd U.S. Army and I think is with us here today. Maybe not. Okay. But uh, we realized we, um, but from that we realized that everything had changed. But I was confident knowing that we had the right team to get the mission done. I got a break just for a minute and I want you to know that the guy that put the training plan together that allowed the Iraqis in three straight years, to, uh, three years after breaking and running, allowed them to regain the honor of their force, the guy that put that training plan together, 
when they then could conduct core level operations clearing their own fires, was none, o none other than the finest soldier I know, Tony Grinston. I will forever remember that. And they're still using that training plan today. Big round of applause for the Sergeant Major of our Army. When I left Iraq in 2015, I was convinced there's no way I'd ever be back. But I was wrong again. In March of 2017, we joined the 3rd U.S. Corps as the 60th Commanding General, and we're proud to follow in my dad's footsteps. You see, my dad and I are the only father-son duo to have commanded America's Hammer. But I didn't spend much time at the great place my family calls home. But before deploying the headquarters for 13 months on the battlefields of Iraq and Syria to lead CJTFOIR, a coalition of over 70 nations, the largest coalition ever assembled in a shared mission to destroy ISIS. By, with, and through our determined Iraqi Syrian partners, the coalition liberated more than 1.8 million innocent civilians subjugated to ISIS's false ideology and restored peace and stability throughout the region, and also liberated Raqqa after three and a half years of brutal occupation during an operation called Roundup. Leaders like John Baraga and Walt Pyatt represent that moment in time. When I stood in the Stocker Stadium in downtown Raqqa that ISIS had used just weeks prior to the wage terror, it brought me back to my early years when my tank company earned best tank company with the same named operation. To me, those moments are what winning looks like. All those windows of time and brief moments that I just shared are not about me. They're about people. They're about shared sacrifice. They're about doing hard things together in this full contact outdoor team sport that is the Army. It do, it's not the days we remember, but rather the moments and the people we shared them with. <coughs> Excuse me. That is why Beth and I stayed in the Army all these years, because of you, because of the precious windows of time shared with you, our family, friends, fellow veterans, teammates, allies, and partners. As all of you know, I have a list of 40 fundamentals. I'm a slow learner. I only learn one thing a year. Funk fundamental number 25 is the Army is a people business. We've certainly made incredible technological advancements over the last few decades. But, but what hasn't changed and what will never change is that in the words of General Creighton Abrams, people are not in the Army. They are the Army. Even if we have the best equipment and the best technology, it is only as good as our people who, are, who train, maintain, and fight it. To quote Admiral McRaven, just to be a joint guy for just a minute, if you want to change the world, make your bed. If you want to change the world, look to people. And to change the world, you have to do it on the land, and you have to do it with the United States Army. Thus, it is incredibly fitting and an incredible honor That it, thus, it is incredibly fitting and an incredible honor for my final job in uniform to be as the Katradoc commander and to focus on driving change for our people, our soldiers, civilians, and their families. While being a soldier is hard, uh, loving a soldier is even harder. I'd like to give a special shout out to my family. We serve together as a family, my wife, my kids, and me. And today, we retire together. That doesn't happen in all Army families. Army, we are all Army kids. We watched our fathers march off, march off to war. We did our part. We held down the fort. We loaded up and we moved out. We made new friends and sacrificed so that others would not have to. As Army kids, we have a common bond and are so proud to have served. To my best friend and wife for over 35 years, Beth, Words can never express what you mean to me and what you mean to our family. You've been the rock, the constant, the source of hope, energy, and unceasing love. I don't know how you've done it all. 
these years. You're an incredible daughter, mom, grandmother, entrepreneur, teacher, accomplished yogi, and the best wife a man could ever dream of. I'm here today because of you. We wouldn't be here today without you. I'm proud of my time in uniform, but I'm proud that I'm ending it with you by my side. Honey, <laughs> honey, to quote Mr. Kipling, we have filled the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run. To my kids, Matt, Amanda, and Nate, the nation doesn't know the sacrifices you made so that I could be a soldier. But I do. Nate and Matt, it was a highlight of my life, but also a tough time to listen to your games at 3 a.m. while deployed. You will never know how much joy you brought me and continue to bring me. I'm so proud of you guys and your families. Amanda, you supported the whole family with your love and during our most challenging family times. I'm so proud of the woman you've become and your wonderful little family. And the lives you are changing through your work. While I may have missed your birth, you are getting ready to see more of me, so you better get ready. <laughs> And as for Jack and Roxy, this grandpa can't wait to take you to school, to go fishing, to go golfing, to share simple moments, and to make new memories with you. It really takes a village, and Beth and I wouldn't be here today without incredible mentors and friends. Mentorship began early for us, starting with our parents. And we've been blessed with incredible people who took us under their wings. It's impossible for everyone to know the combined impact of their words, actions, and encouragement. Throughout history, generations of brave soldiers have fought to keep evil at bay. And it's been the privilege of my life to have worn the jersey of that team, our team, the greatest team on earth, the United States Army. And let me tell you, I have loved being a soldier, and we have loved being part of your team. Our uniform represents two things around the world, hope and fear. Hope for the downtrodden, our allies, and for those who seek a better way of life, for those who need our assistance, and for those who need a helping hand. And it's fear in the hearts of our enemies, because they know when the Army puts boots on the ground, America means business. And any time, anywhere, the United States Army will win, because winning matters. <clears throat> there has been a member of the Funk Brown family serving since World War II. And that 80-year tradition of service to others continues today, with my nephew in uniform, and also continues out of uniform through my amazing kids who will give back to our nation in so many ways. From the first moment I saw my dad fly a Cobra, to marrying my high school class favorite, to the births of our three amazing children, to witnessing the world change on 9-11 when I was Gary on six, to deploying six times in combat, to following my dad's footsteps and commanding the Third Armored Corps to becoming your grandfather. Life is a series of moments, a series of memories and snapshots in time. Thank you all for your service and your sacrifice. Thank you for the precious windows of time you've shared with us on this journey, on this 38 year affair of the heart. Go Army, go Falcons, sorry Chief. I think Steve Cannon's even here. Go Dodgers! And if, let's build some uh, game changers through the first T program. God bless you all. God bless the United States Army. As I said when I started, my name is Funk, and I'm a soldier for life.
Jackson for the Army Song. The United States Army is honored to have presented today's special ceremony. Guests are welcome to express best wishes to General Funk and his family. Thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>